Hi everyone and welcome back to our home. It's lovely to have you here. In today's video, I want to give you a tour around our son's bedroom, Oscar. It's very preppy, very cool, and it's another good example of how I design kids' rooms so that it will grow with them. So follow me and I'll show you around. A mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. It's terribly kind of you, fox, but no, I'm going to have lunch with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? Who's a gruffalo? Gruffalo is it? Gruffalo mouse. Who's that? So welcome to Oscar's bedroom. Before I start this tour, I wanted to just share with you a little story about how this design came about. When I was pregnant with Oscar, we had a 12 week scan in America. And at that scan, the midwife said to us that she could tell us whether or not we were having a boy or a girl. And did we want to know? And I'm not the kind of person that likes surprises. I love to plan for everything. So I was like, yes, definitely tell us. And she was like, well, I can tell you that you're having a girl. But as we can see, Oscar is not a girl. And what happened was we'd also done the harmony test. If you watched um, our last video, you'll know that we had a lot of miscarriages. And so every time I was pregnant, I did something called the harmony test that checks for chromosomal abnormalities and just any complications that you might expect to have. And two days after we were told we were having a girl, we got the results of the harmony test and it told us we were having a boy. And having had two days to think that I was having a daughter and a sister for Ava and we told all our family, it took a little bit of adjustment. So the first thing that I did to sort of understand that I was having a boy, I wasn't having a girl, was design his bedroom. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I literally went straight onto Pinterest. I put some schemes together and once I'd nailed down the design of his room, I was like, it's good. I know what his bedroom's gonna look like. I'm having a son. <laughs> the starting point when I was putting that scheme together understanding that I was having a boy was this wallpaper. I've seen it and loved it for years. It's by Philip Jeffries and it's called Chevron Chic. And what I love about it is that it has this really subtle herringbone pattern, which feels quite playful, it's quite preppy, um, but I think it's a very enduring design. It's something that will grow with him. I could see him in this room as a baby, but equally I can see him in this room as a teenager. And it's also very durable. It is um, a woven grass cloth. Um, but people ask me about how practical it is. Some people ask me if it's fabric. It's not. It's very textured. Um, but what I can tell you, because Oscar's little um, nappy changing station is here, is that this whole area has had a lot of things put on it without going into too much detail. And as you can see, it's completely perfect. Anytime there has been any accidents, I've just literally wiped it and it's wiped off brilliantly. Art is a really key element into creating kids' bedrooms that feel fun and playful. It's something that you can change up really easily and that is my approach of how I make sure that the room feels appropriate for each stage. So I started off with these um, photographs of baby animals. I think they're by an artist in America called Sharon Montrose. Um, and I had them when Ava had this as her nursery but I loved them so much I just put them in a different configuration and reused them. Um, this is very off-brand, but I'm going to share it with you because I know everyone's going to ask me. The frames are Ikea, don't tell anyone. Um, but I love them because they pick out different antique brass accents elsewhere in the room. And again, they're also very safe and um, practical for kids' rooms because it's not glass that's here. This is just perspex. So if, you know, when he's a bit older, he throws balls in here and they fall off the wall, it's not going to shatter and have shards of glass. This little giraffe, again, um, you'll see this in a lot of people's nurseries and it was something that I'd put in the very first nursery that I designed um, for a project called the Cobham Project, which you can see on our website. Um, we had it sort of over the cot and um, I always loved it. So I knew when I had a son, I wanted to have this and it just fills this space quite nicely. It's the giraffe of a name. It doesn't actually. What do you think we should call it? My kids aren't very sort of creative when it comes to names. Most of the animals and toys are called what they are. So this, this, this will probably be called giraffe or giraffey. Um, How about Jeff? 
Do you know, we could call it Ollie um, because he has the same hair color as you. <laughs> so this is Ollie the Giraffe. <laughs> it's official. About a week ago, I put a post on our Instagram and I let everyone know that we were going to be doing a room tour of this room. And I just said, any questions that you've got, please ask them. So I'm going to go through some of the most popular questions that we got asked. I want to try and give you guys as much helpful information as possible. Okay, this is a good question. What made you decide on giving your children a classic bedroom versus a colorful kid's bedroom? Personally, I love the classic, da 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 da. Okay. I just think there's this unwritten rule that people think, oh, it's a kid, I must do bright colors. Well, I disagree. It's still part of your home. And yes, you want to cater to your children, you want to make it playful, it's got to represent them. But that doesn't mean it has to be primary colors. I think. For me, this room is a really lovely, playful room, but I don't want to be wasteful. I don't want to have to redesign this room every four years. So whilst he might like really bright colors, age two or three, to be honest, they don't pay that much attention. He's not really interested in what's on the wallpaper. He's more interested in his little digger toys. So I think don't get wrapped up in that. The adults have to live in that house too. It should be enduring, it should be timeless. Go for something that represents what you love in the whole of your house and add those little touches, whether it's the little animal heads or, you know, lots, his books are very bright. I've got the animal art. You can add a lot of interest and a lot of playful things without having to go for really bright colors on your main pieces. So that's my approach to it. And a lot of people tell me otherwise that I am depriving my children and they won't learn and all these things. But I think people worry about it too much. Ultimately, they sleep in these rooms. My children are outside as much as possible and that is the main thing. Don't worry about what colour your furnishings are. Make sure your children are getting lots of time outside and lots of time with you. No mum shaming around here. Yes, no mum shaming please. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the nappy changing station. This is a really key thing to have in any um, baby's room. I have a nappy changing station downstairs in our utility room and one upstairs, you need one on every floor if you live in a house. And what I did here was I just used a standard chest of drawers. I didn't want to buy a specific nappy changing station piece of furniture. I think it's a waste of money. They're going to get through that stage in about two, three years, and then it's just going to be redundant. Whereas um, this chest of drawers, we can keep this reuser. And then just to make it a little bit safer, I've got this um, basket on top, which I absolutely love. Um, I think this is by Ollie and Ella, but I'll double check and I'll share that um, in the description box below. And then I've put one of the monogram towels from our collection with Coe's in there. And um, this has got Oscar's monogram OTP. And I think having a towel in there is a lot more practical than having something that's specifically a nappy changing cushion because these get changed daily. So it's always nice and clean and fresh. Above that, I wanted to create some visual interest. I didn't want to have a piece of art. I thought it was quite nice to have some shelves. Um, but if you're planning on putting shelves above your nappy changing station, make sure that they aren't very deep because otherwise when you're leaning forward, changing the nappy, you're going to bang your head and it'll be really annoying. These, I would say, are about 15 centimeters deep, which is the ideal depth. And then I've just dressed them with a combination of um, photo frames. This is um, a photo frame from Ralph Lauren. Oscar when he was a little baby. He's doing like a little rock star pose. I think it's so cute. Um, and that's Ralph Lauren and I got that from Lux Deco. Um, and then a little um, rugby ball, which um, he does actually play with, but I bought more as a decorative accessory. Um, and then these are really sweet. This was actually, um, this one and this one up there was a little gift from Fenella Realms, who I talk about all the time. We've used her artwork in clients' projects for years and years. I absolutely love her. And when she heard that I'd had a son, she sent me these as a gift, which is so lovely. Um, really, really special. And he's very lucky to have his own Fenella Realms. Um, and then here, this is the collection of just lovely little books um, from Beatrix Potter, so Peter Rabbit. It's a classic, Oscar loves Peter Rabbit. Um, and then I've got those um, held in place with some book stands. These are agate stone book stands either side. And whenever you use an accessory like an agate slice, just remember to put some pads underneath, otherwise it's gonna scratch your furniture. So that's something we do on all clients' projects. If you've got an accessory that's sharp, we always put um, felt pads on it. 
Um, and then these shoes obviously don't fit him anymore, but these were a gift from a client um, who lives in Dubai and she bought him um, Hermes shoes. <laughs> so it's very bougie. For his bed, similar to Ava's bedroom, I went for the biggest bed that I could fit into the space. He doesn't sleep here yet, he sleeps in a cot, um, but this will be a great bed for him to transition into and I'll just get the little side barriers to make that safe for him when he does. I went for a 1.2 metre wide bed, which was the most um, wide bed that I could comfortably fit in the space because I wanted to keep space along that wall that I could put extra furniture. So it's not quite as big as Ava's bed, um, but he's not ever allowed to have girlfriends or boyfriends to stay because he's just going to love his mummy forever. <laughs> um, for his headboard, now I learnt, I've learned a lot of things being a mum and designing other bedrooms for children and if you have seen pictures of Ava's previous nursery, I had a sofa bed, um, which I thought was a great idea and I've done it for a client, but actually it's a nightmare because every morning to make it, you have to like sort of rub your knuckles off tucking the duvet down and it never looks that tidy. The kids always want to sit on it. Just isn't a very easy thing to do. So I wouldn't do one of those again. Instead, I've just gone for a normal bed and then for the headboard, predominantly leather um, in the inside panel and then some linen on the outside. And then just for a nice detail, I've gone for this braided leather trim from Samuel and Sons that matches the color of the tan leather. And that just adds a nice bit of detail on the um, outer edge. And I think it gives it that sort of preppy Ralph Lauren vibe as well, which I really love. For the bed sheets themselves, these are again from Alco's collection. Um, it's got his monogram on all of them, which I love. Then I've done this custom cushion, a bolster cushion um, in front of those. This is a fabric from my collection with Andrew Martin, which you can buy by the meter. So if you want to make your own cushions, you can, but it's also made in readily available cushions. So you can just buy those. And I think they're 55 by 55 centimeters. So if you didn't want to go down the route of making your own cushion, you could just buy two of those. And that brush fringe is from Samuel and Sands. And then finally, we have another monogrammed cushion. This one's from our Co's collection. And you can literally just buy this one off the shelf. You put your initials that you want, you pick your font you wanna have, and it gets sent to you um, pretty quickly, I think in like two weeks or something. Um, then for dressing the end of the bed, this was a experiment that I did because I don't really like um, heavy, bedspreads, especially for a kid's room, I feel like it's just a bit of a hassle to take them on and off every day. Um, so this is an Andrew Martin fabric. It's a beautiful wool with a very soft herringbone pattern, which picks out the pattern of the wallpaper. And then I added this um, Samuel and Sons trim around the perimeter, which was something that I hadn't done before, but I would definitely do it again. I think it looks great. The only thing I would do differently if you're planning on doing something like this is I would put the thinnest possible wadding that you can buy um, underneath it and then if you're having this made by an upholsterer just get them to do a little um, stitch every sort of like 20 centimetres and that will keep it together and stop it from twisting and turning and what that will do is it means you don't have to have it perfectly smoothed out it gives you a little bit of leeway if there's you know some bumps and creases it kind of smooths itself out whereas this one very much has to be perfectly smoothed down um, and it's just one of those things I've learned. The next question is what did you change about the room when it went from your daughter's room to being your son's how do you design differently for small kids what do you need to consider for safety well there is a lot of questions there um, I think the best thing to do is look at the pictures of when it was Ava's room and then see Oscar's room. It's probably easier to tell you what I didn't change, which is I didn't change the carpet, I didn't change the chandelier, didn't change the wardrobes, and I didn't change the hard furniture like the chest of drawers and the bedside tables or the artwork, but I changed all the fabrics, all the wall covering, all the soft furnishings, and I wanted to give it its own identity and make it a little bit more boyish and a bit more preppy. What I will do to consider safety, I think it's really important and part of like preparing to be a parent is to research all of these things and I'm by no means an expert and I wouldn't want you to use this as an exhaustive list. Um, but I just think in terms of practicality about maybe not having too many sharp corners. Um, all the furniture, this is a really important one, all the furniture is attached to the wall with safety 
straps. So if they start climbing up on the chest of drawers or anything, even the bedside tables I have at, um, that piece of furniture isn't gonna land on top of them. And that's a really key one is do not have any furniture in your whole house that they could climb up and it could fall on top of them. Because again, a lot of children die because of that. And it's really something that we can easily avoid. Um, so I think that's my top tip for safety is just attach all your furniture to the wall. Um, it's definitely with a boy, I see how much they climb on furniture. So that's a good one to remember. For the bedside table lamps, I've gone for these lamps that are by Visual Comfort and I sourced those through Andrew Martin, who is their distributor in the UK. Um, and then a nice little shawl green um, photo frame. This one is by Forward, it's from Lux Deco. So this is a Tony box, not an ad, but my mother-in-law bought me this. She was told by one of her friends who's got lots of grandchildren, Lynn, um, that it's a really good toy. And basically it's kind of like a music system or a speaker for kids. And then they can buy all these little, um, characters and you get one of the characters this is a fox and you put it on top and it just plays either um, some music or a story um, and Ava and Oscar love this because they just like feel like they're so grown up having their own music by Sony Wonder written by Jana Lini it's a really nice thing at night time, um, especially where sometimes if you've got multiple children, you need to put one to bed and the other one needs to entertain themselves. I thought this was the perfect spot to put his cart. It's nicely tucked out of the way. I chose this particular cart. It's the Sebra Juno cart, which I bought from Scandiborn, and it's in the classic gray. And I loved it for a few reasons. It's got a kind of mid-century feel, which I love, and I thought it went really well with the rest of the decor. It's also quite a compact cut, so it fitted nicely into this little nook. Um, and it's a little bit more masculine um, than some of the other cuts out there. And you'll see with the Oscars room, I haven't gone for too much of a babyish feel. It's probably a lot more grown up than you'd expect. And that goes with the whole idea that this room will grow with him. These animal heads are from Fiona Walker. Um, she's based in the UK and I thought they were so lovely. When I saw them, I knew they were perfect for this room because they go with the animal theme. They're very playful, which I needed some very playful art to make it not too serious and too grown up in here. Um, and he absolutely loves it. I was worried he might be a little bit scared of this lion hanging over his cart, but every night he says goodnight to the lion and he, and he really seems to enjoy it. For Oscar's window treatments, I've gone for Roman blinds, and this is a very subtle herringbone that I got from Romo, which is a great price point. And then I've added a trim just down the sides um, that's from Samuel and Sons. And I picked this particular trim because the color works really well with the wallpaper, but this little step design as well also corresponds with a little step in the herringbone of the wallpaper. I'd love to know how did you plan the room or the layouts so that it grows with Oscar as he grows up, where would you fit in a home workstation for him? So that is a great question. So one of the first things I did when I was designing this room, as well as going on Pinterest and putting a mood board together was I always start with a scale floor plan of the room and then I plot the furniture on to scale. And you don't have to be able to use AutoCAD to do this. If you're designing your own home, you can literally measure it. You could do it by hand with a pencil, buy a scale ruler, you can buy them online. Um, but if you plot the furniture, you get a much better feel for how that space will work. So very early on, I did that. I knew what size bed that allowed me to have, what size cot that allowed me to have. And I wanted to check not only the size of the pieces, but the space between them. And then I would also go on to say, if you have the option of doing it, um, you know, even mark it out on your floor. Like you don't have to use masking tape. You can just use like lots of little books to like, represent that particular item on your floor and then you can walk around the space and see how that feels because a floor plan doesn't always translate to a, a room case in point i have this chest of drawers and the bed and this was really what was sort of limiting what size bed i could do i didn't want to make this too much of a pinch point and on a floor plan really i wouldn't have gone with this it would have felt too tight but actually in person because this isn't a wardrobe, it's not going all the way up, you still feel like you've got a lot of space here and the bed is very low. It allowed me to go a little bit tighter than I maybe would have gone had I not checked it in the space. So definitely do your furniture layouts 
on a floor plan, but also check it in the room and see what feels right because um, that's really the starting point before you do anything is get the layout of your furniture. To answer your next question, I always like to include certain things in a room if I can. So obviously you want to have the biggest bed possible, you want to have lots of storage. I love to include a chair in a room and I think that's particularly important in a children's bedroom. Part of your bedtime routine should always be after you give them a bath, read them a book, you're slowly winding down and by repeating that every night they kind of know what's coming next. In all kids' rooms, I always love to do a reading corner, and this is a space that we use a lot. Oscar loves books, um, as you can tell. And this particular chair is not a rocking chair, which is something that I use quite a lot, but it's actually a um, spinning chair. This one's from Andrew Martin, and it was a great price point. And then I've doubled that up with a little footstool. I picked this one because it's got a really funky design, it's very mid-century, I love the wooden finish on the bottom and then this kind of toweling boucle fabric on the top and this one is from Bernhardt. Then above me here, these are some custom shelves. I had these custom made because I wanted it to be the same finish as I have for the other furniture. Um, but IKEA do do ready-made, I think they call them picture shelves and they come in white and black. Um, otherwise if you wanted to have something similar made you could get a good joinery firm. Um, to make that for you and they're just stuffed full of books we just read about 10 books a day Oscar's always trying to prolong his bedtime so we go through quite a few every night this fabric I absolutely love again it goes with that safari animal theme um, it's like a beautiful zebra print with the tan and the white and this one is from um, Turnell and Gijon who are in the Chelsea Harbour Design Centre they've got so many beautiful fabrics and then I've doubled up on that. This one is one of the small cushions from our collection with Coe's um, and it's got his monogram again. And this one hasn't got a brush fringe or anything. I've just kept it really simple. Um, I think that looks really cute with the zebra print cushion. The last piece of furniture to talk about in this room is this toy trunk. It's by Thomas May Bespoke Toy Boxes, the same supplier that did Ava's and it's got his monogram and it's got a slightly warmer finish and it works really well with all the other colours in the room. The carpet or the flooring that you put in your kids' rooms is going to make or break the room. You really need something practical because accidents are going to happen. So I went for an indoor-outdoor rug. This rug was custom made from Stark and it's called Hunter and Driftwood. And although it's very light and it's really playful, it's also really practical because if he does have an accident on it, you can just scrub it clean you can use a whole variety of cleaning products and you don't have to be precious about it. So it's a great option. These wardrobes, I didn't change too much. They've been like this for 10 years, but when I changed this room from Ava's nursery into Oscar's nursery, I just made a couple of tweaks. And that was I changed the handles um, to this slightly more funky design, which is from Armac Martin. It's in an antique brass finish. And I think it's called their mix handle. And then I changed the metal trim on the top and the bottom to an antique bra so that all tied in with the handles and all the finishes that I've got elsewhere in the room. I've realised from some of your comments on previous videos that I haven't actually shown you many bathrooms in our house yet. So I thought I would show you Oscar's bathroom. It's quite small, um, but I think it works really nicely and I've kind of kept the colours so the colour palette works. This is all the same bathroom that I had um, when it was Ava's nursery. I actually designed this bathroom before we had children, before we were even pregnant. I kind of hoped that we would have children. I thought this would work whether we had a boy or a girl. And then if you come in, you can see a little snippet of what we used to have for the blinds. I had a feeling I was going to have a boy long, long, long time ago because my husband just comes from a family of all boys. So I did this um, lovely geometric fabric, which isn't available anymore. It's over 10 years old. And then I trimmed that with some blue fabric. Um, but it worked perfectly well for Ava's room as well. And then the wall tiles, these are just a Carrara marble, gen it's a real marble, um, but having it in a tile makes it a lot more affordable than slab. And I did that in a brick bonded pattern, which basically means it's just like, you know, how bricks are arranged in a brick wall. Above the loo, because I like to have wall mounted toilets, I think they just look a lot cleaner. It gives a feeling of space. You, tend, you have to build the wall out so you get a void above it and I like to fill that in with a shelving unit so with this one I wrapped the tiles around the corner so it almost feels like this is made of solid stone this wall 
and then I um, had the joiner who made the vanity unit make some chunky shelves, I think these are about five centimetres thick, and we mirrored the back so it just bounces lots of light back into the room. And I've dressed that with some of his monogram towels, again they're from Coe's Linen, and a little basket with some nice products, a little crystal, and then just a decorative crystal on top that brings in those blue colours elsewhere in the room. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one.